Thank you, Lisa and Lily. Now we uh, now is the time for your questions. I tend in these things to be a bit fascistic about them actually being questions. But given it's an opportunity to talk to candidates coming up in the election, statements will be acceptable, but just keep it short. Keep it pithy. There are many of you here. I'm sure you have contributions to make. Let's try and avoid retreading old ground. I'm going to kick off with my own question, the first one too, Cheeky, just before I go to you. Uh, and it's this. We had some terrific specific examples there. We had um, a nice indication of a broad philosophy. But, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think either of you mentioned the word coal at any point in <laughs> what you have to say. Can you give me an indication as to whether the ALP plans to have a concrete policy about whether it's coal seam gas, whether it's uh, the mines? What's the, what's the approach that yeah. you're taking? Well, no uh, coal seam gas, uh, we, we've been very clear on that uh, and consistent and that is, and, and in fact we, we're the, the party that actually uh, announced that, uh, and called on uh, the Nathan government to uh, install a moratorium uh, on coal seam gas uh, exploration, unconventional gas exploration and, uh, and uh, also establish a parliamentary inquiry through committee. Uh, we did that in 2012 I believe. Uh, and it was some time uh, much after that, after a lot of ridicule uh, by, by the government against us, that the government actually ended up uh, falling in behind that. Our position remains the same, that uh, we will have, a, if we're elected, we will have a robust and transparent uh, process based on the science uh, in ter and, and community engagement, because there's, there are many, many communities right across uh, the state, and we've been very clear that uh, you know, we're not going to go ahead with any coal seam gas exploration uh, unless we are clear about what the science says about it uh, and what the community says about it. And so that's that's our position quite clear on that front. In terms of just on that, I you know what we've said is it needs to you know uh, be health and environmentally yeah. proven to be safe. And I suppose that um, I think that might be going to be hard to, to prove if any, uh, given the international experience and the evidence that's coming out of my cost and gas, but um, we have said that there would be an independent process that would be set by all environmental, social, health uh, risks in relation to cost and gas. Yeah. And new mines? Would uh, you categorically rule them out? Uh, well, uh, I think what's important for us is uh, to consider uh, where the state is at the moment in terms of uh, the resources and how they've been used. Uh, uh, and certainly, and I'm not sure if this, well, this is obviously about coal locations, I'll take it, yeah. And uh, so we're going to have a look at exactly what the allocations that have been made in recent years, and I know that there's a lot of scepticism, uh, and some quite rightly so, uh, in terms of whether that's simply just been about land being tied up for a long time, for many, many years, and really very little result that's come out of that in fact, probably no results with all of them. Uh, so we would be very uh, clear about the need to um, uh, assess the status of, of those uh, before we do much more in terms of other allocations. So it's important for us to get that, that very detailed picture. Thank you. Now, uh, that was a little demonstration. My second question, there was like six words long. So uh, that's, that's the model to follow. We're going to take a question here. There are some microphones coming to you now. I'll, I'll try to keep it uh, fairly quick. Uh, I'm from Surf Coast Air Action, and if uh, I can, I'll address my question to Lily. Uh, as you're aware, we've got enormous problems down at Anglesey with sulphur dioxide with the Alcoa Anglesey <coughs> coal plan. I, I was delighted the other day to see that the new uh, candidate for Polworth, Libby Coker, came out in the Gillam Advertiser and backed Sarah Henderson's call for SO2 scrubbers to be installed at Anglesey to dramatically reduce those emissions. I just wanted to confirm that that is in fact ALP policy. Well, Sarah Henderson's been out there and, and made statements to the effect that they, you know, she wants to have a look at coal scrubbers and that's fine. So really the challenge yes, needs to be But yes, off. we ticked off. So Libby's yeah. not saying anything that we haven't ticked off. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going about the wrong way. Lisa's <laughs> <don't>, hit it. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a question just here. The microphone's coming through you now. Oh, here and then there. No, that's okay. You jump in front, but we'll, we'll head back in a second. The check. This one is probably to Lily as well. You answered uh, quite a bit of it. Uh, Australians love renewable energy, and why wouldn't we? 
Uh, would the Warburton review likely to uh, achieve its target of shutting down the renewable energy industry? What will Victorian Labor do to make sure Victorians benefit the same way South Australians are currently benefiting? In other words, if you are elected, will you legislate for a Victorian renewable energy target? What will be our target? And when can we expect to have a said? most of it, although, and, and, and the last bit of it was, I think I'd answer that in terms of the constitutional barriers. Uh, whilst the rent continues to exist, uh, whether, whether it's very functional or not is another question, but whilst that legislation is there and those provisions are in that legislation, um, uh, state schemes that are similar to that uh, effectively won't be able to be binding on any corporations. So effectively that's, that, that's a problem, that's a big problem. Um, it's a challenge, but as I said earlier, challenges are also, should also be seen as opportunities, and opportunities are there, and we're certainly considering uh, how we can uh, ensure that uh, that is not a hindrance, if you like, and, and you know, we'll have more to say in terms of what exactly that means, but certainly, you know, we're in the business of wanting to grow more energy, uh, and, and uh, if we, and, and, and uh, we will be going to the election with some more to say in terms of how we might be able to, or how we intend to get our fair share of the investment here in Victoria uh, and the jobs here in Victoria, because as we know, uh, a lot of the investment in the red uh, is, is being paid by Victoria, but to the advantage of South Australia, we put on them. You know, they've, they've had a fantastic run with uh, uh, wind energy, um, but we need to make sure that we're active in terms of getting the investment here in Victoria and around the issue of it. So that, that'll need some creativity, uh, but uh, but there are ways that we can deal with that. When can we actually expect to see some legislation? Uh, well, are we likely to see it in the first year? Well, we'll, we'll have, look, I can't tell you it will be the first month or the first year, but certainly we'll have something very concrete to say uh, that, that will set us on a really strong course. No. Thank you for your question, sir. I will use you as an example, however. Once you lose the microphone, there's no follow-up questions. <laughs> that, that phase of your life is over once the microphone leaves your hand. So I'll, I'll encourage you to follow that. I might just quickly as a follow-up from that. Both of you touched on this, but it's germane to that question. To what extent within the ALP is there an environmental voice in discussions that are part of other portfolios? You know, where uh, you both touched on planning in particular, but when it's attracting business, when it's you know, are you in those conversations? Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, you know, whether it's um, tourism, regional development, when you're talking about national parks, etc., or whether it's talking about um, renewable energy in the business space in Treasury, all of that, absolutely. So all of those conversations are happening with appropriate other shadow ministers. And I suppose you've got to realise that it sort of sounds like we've got a whole bureaucracy that sits behind that, but that's just not true. So Lily and I, we're it. So uh, we have no advisors, it's us. Um, um, our electric officers probably occasionally do things, but that's... So, but yes, so between shadow ministers uh, on our own, we, we are trying to do that cross portfolio discussions. Great. Second row here. Yes. Thank you. Um, my question pertains to um, energy performance of buildings. Um, one thing that the state government can do is uh, strong regulation on building performance. Um, we've had a lot of talk in the past about mandatory energy disclosure, which nothing has seemed to happen. Uh, we have uh, these star ratings for new buildings, and when you go in them, you can see that their energy performance is appalling, so that's clearly not working. But we have a big issue with existing buildings, um, and you can certainly have voluntary schemes, but uh, the best sort of scheme, I believe, is as mandatory uh, regulations around energy performance of existing buildings, particularly for rental properties. Um, what are you proposing to do in this area? Oh, yeah. Well, we've already made uh, our position on that at a high level in terms of VET, and we'll flesh out the details of that. But certainly, um, uh, how we can make, uh, uh, how, how we can improve the energy efficiency of uh, 
um, are, the, are the buildings owned by, by people or rented out by people uh, in the rental market, as we all know, is a very difficult one in terms of various barriers in terms of ownership and the like. But we're very mindful of that and we know that we've got a long way to go in terms of lifting those standards. Uh, so uh, we're alive to it, absolutely. Uh, and, and again, uh, we believe that we'll have some um, responses to that um, for people to consider in relation. So I think it's both residential but it's also commercial as well. And um, you know, we need to be looking at both of those. Um, the beat should be should be a driver of that uh, a good beat scheme. But we, I think my view is that we also need to look at what the standards are because I think. When you make the comment that you go in the building that they're claiming their X star, I, I, I think there is disparity um, between different local councils. Now you're not going to have, you know, so we need to have a look at some of those ratings and making sure that they are delivering on the energy efficiency outcome as well. Um, and and uh, uh, one of the concerns I've got, uh, and this actually came out um, in a visit I did with Environment Victoria to one of the houses that have been retrofitted, but that, that there are also issues about some of the, uh, both in building new buildings to meet standards, but also in retrofitting people who have the skills to do this. Um, so some of the new buildings, and I think this is happening in some of the public housing where we're trying to build to high standard and have been built without you know, taking account of the need for some flow through air, um, they're so tight they're causing rising damage. So we need to make sure that in doing in, in these standards, we have good standards, appropriate standards, and um, against commercial and residential, that we have drivers likely to, to do it, but we also are monitoring the outcomes of that to make sure that individuals and the community are getting the benefits of the those investments. Thanks. We're gonna take a question just there. Yep, you saw the microphone's coming to you. Uh, Lily uh, Donald-Smith, pleased to see you after so long. Uh, a couple of aside, and then probably a question for Lisa. Oh, that sounds like a tricky idea. Very short. Uh, All right. First of all, thanks to Environment Victoria. Love the uh, irony of the excess lighting and the plastic water bottles. For what it's worth, I'm wearing polystyrene shoes as well. <laughs> <laughs> to our colleague over here, I think we're really all on the same side of the colleague over here. Really, um, my uh, power um, gas consumption uh, is lower than yours. My house needs refitting, but um, energy efficiency of the house is a secondary measure. Power consumption is the primary measure. If you want to start making something compulsory for people, I don't recommend it, make them have lower consumption of the power instead of uh, uh, pointless, uh, uh, very expensive refitting when it's not necessary. So, you're getting into a very area. Anyway, that's the other side. No, I was hoping it was the other side because if it was the question, you fundamentally misunderstood what a question looks like. <laughs> uh, keep it short. Yeah, Thank um, you. The, the problem in, in our over-consuming society, and I'm talking about the Australian society, is that the, the talk, the debate is around um, energy Toll Road. I know this is a, not a transport uh, forum, 
However, I think one of the biggest issues of our environment is the excessive use of motor vehicles. Um, we've made some small steps, or the party have made some small steps on East-West. I want to know definitively that you're absolutely going to this election and saying no, no, no. We've said that. We've said no, no, no. We've made it clear. Uh, we've made it clear. I don't think you have. I've always continued on court cases and a few other things. We've made it clear what our role will be in that court case and that we will not be contesting on behalf of the state. So the outcome, I think, is very clear because of that. OK, we're going to go over this side now and we might stick in the aisle and then I have seen all the rest of you and really you'll all see it on my memory. We will get to it. <laughs> oh, yes, just here. Great, just here. On the east-west tunnel, I for one will not be voting for you if you propose that tunnel. Mm. <laughs> Controversial, not technically a question, but, <laughs> but I, I made it clear it didn't have to be. So uh, you know. that's what elections are about. There are contests, and what it lacked in question mark I made up for in pit. Uh, so we're going to go directly behind you then. On, on the same topic, uh, I seem to remember that the east leg originally was going to be a freeway and under Labour it became a tollway. So there's an issue of trust there. Would you like to talk about trust? Well, well, at the, well can I just say at the time, so I, when that decision was made, it was because the franchise that had been set up by the Kennett government on public transport, uh, the trams, was that it, unless we bailed them out, they would collapse. So we chose at the time that we had to, uh, we could not afford to pay for the East Link. We needed to be a toll system in order to bail out the public transport system that Kennet had um, privatised. So that was the choice we made, and we chose public transport over the road at the time. I might get you to expand on it, given that we're just in a little transport cul de sac at the moment, and I know it's not uh, strictly so speaking. Let's just remember we won an election post doing that. Anyway, the, uh, I mean, I, I so use I my Mikey. I use my Mikey many days of the week. I travel many more, um, and <laughs> you know, public transport. Public transport could do with a serious and substantial investment. Uh, obviously, it's not your express area, but can you just talk a little bit about the influence that you aim to have on public transport policy going into the election? Oh, um, uh, I think. I think we're going to this election saying public transport should be the priority. I mean, that's what we've said. And um, we've said we believe in the metro train um, uh, service, and I'm a Dawn person, so I'm not sure I'll call the Jingo because we're coming to Spencer Street. Um, but, you Southern know, that's just Southern Cross. Southern Cross. Sorry. We thought Geelong people still call it Spencer Street. Fair um, so uh, we, we like our traditions there. It's like the cats or the. Uh, so we've said it's the number one priority. It's not why we're not doing the East West Link, and uh, we, you know, the announcement we made recently in Geelong was 20 minute services for Geelong residents. So that's been the priority over the West Link, for example. So I think we will. We've made some statements around public transport, and there will be uh, a heap more of those to come. Right. All right. Now, what I would suggest if you've noticed an area of conversation that we've covered two or three times, feel free not to keep your hand up. That's just a thought from me. And we're going to go in the aisle just here. Uh, no, up behind the notepad. Yes, perfect. <coughs> Sorry to call you notepad, but it was useful. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, what happens if the you mentioned transitioning the Victorian automotive industry to the development of renewable technologies and um, the green job sector. I was wondering how thorough these plans are currently and how you're going to market these changes to this industry and their communities. Well, the automotive industry was an example, uh, which is quite good today. <coughs> there are other examples that we could look at. But certainly, look, at the end of the day, we're saying that we're going to have a renewable energy action plan and we'll have these things mapped out and it'll be a jobs program, it'll have a very strong jobs focus in that too. So uh, it will be well thought out, uh, it will be detailed. Uh, and of course it's not going to be something that is delivered by the government department, it's delivered by an opposition with the resources of an opposition, but it will be thorough uh, and it will be uh, certainly very tested in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the 
especially if you like the commitments that will be made and the achievements that we hope to get out of that. So it will be a very detailed and robust policy. Okay, we're going to go further back just because I know you're feeling sad all the way up. So, sorry, microphone people. I'm just getting a bit more specific on that. You mentioned the loss of jobs in the auto industry. We need to go renewable. In terms of having a vision beyond the next election cycle, will Labor commit to supporting the establishment of an electric vehicle industry in Victoria? I mean, electric vehicles, of course, are the next iteration, if you like, in terms of car manufacturing. Um, however, um, I think um, it would be a fool to say that we're going to actually start manufacturing uh, electric vehicles in, in Victoria, given that we haven't been able to sustain uh, enough of the demand for, for traditional vehicles. So um, that's the statement on that uh, matter. But, you know, having said that, I mean, there are going to be electric vehicles that are going to be, uh, start to be sold uh, in Australia. We've already got one. I think the Tesla is out there. Uh, there are more that are coming. I think maybe another two or three models uh, are going to be hitting the Australian market in the next couple of years. And so, as a result of that, there will be related um, industries uh, that need to be able to service the needs of, of customers with those types of vehicles. So. Uh, it's something that uh, you know is, is important for governments to keep an eye on to see whether the opportunity is uh, that those present to us in terms of uh, skills uh, and, uh, and training opportunities and certainly jobs that can support uh, the advent of uh, electric vehicles. Thank you. Over this side, this gentleman's been very patient. Yeah. Thanks very much, and thank you both for your uh, presentation. Um, look, as a preface, I feel we desperately need a reform of state taxes, uh, because where you sit, you are driven by gambling taxes, property taxes like stab duties, the judge tax, all the factors that we used to produce an ever more bloated Melbourne. So anyhow, at the background, my question is really about what uh, uh, Lisa promised about restoring the funding to the Department of Environment, Parks Victoria, the Coastal Council, and all those good people and, and projects that we that have got. I've never really recovered from the Kennedy years, including coastal protection, big for nourishment, and so on. Are you actually going to restore the funding to at least the um, funding level? Please. I, I, I'm not committing to that today. Well, there will need to be a budget process around that. What we're committing, what I'm committing to in coastal is that we need a new regime for coastal management, uh, and we need to have a look at all of it. At the moment, we have a number of um, agencies, a number of groups, uh, and that will that will that will require resourcing as well. So, but I want to make sure that we we've got the right structures in place. I don't think we do. Um, in order to meet the challenges of, our, of um, climate change, coastal erosion, our foreshore management, um, and that will require resources. I just don't know where, where those resources will go. And there will be a process that we will go through in terms of that. I understand the inability to make a commitment in that area, but can we extrapolate from your comments tonight that in the event that you are our Environment Minister come the end of the year, that that's an area of interest to you, a oh, priority area? Going to absolutely be a priority, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like, uh, what I know is that absolutely Parks Victoria is on its knees and that's not sustainable in, in managing our park system. So it is <coughs> absolutely something that we have to look at and what, yeah. Great. Uh, this woman here, second from the aisle. Yes. I'm wondering um, if Labor will step away from the bilateral agreement Federal Government um, for assessments and approvals under the APBC Act? <coughs> um, I, I don't know what it, sorry, what I'd say is that I think that what's happened is um, uh, terrible and we need a, both a good federal and a state oversight in relation to environmental laws. I, I, I'm not, 
would I want to give powers to the Abbott government? I'm not sure. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, that's realistic, and, and I, I'd want to have a look at that, and I'd want to be talking to a community. I mean, long term, absolutely, you want a good road up. You don't want to see what's happened. Um, but the reality is, if, if we were elected into government, I'd be looking at uh, an Abbott government who uh, I would not trust one out in relation to the environment. Um, and maybe it's better it stays here, maybe given they've signed that up. So I'm just being very honest, I, it'd be something that I'd want to have a look at, I'd want to get advice on, and I'd want to talk to the key organisations about um, in terms of the short-term protection release for Victoria. Now, we only have time for two more questions or statements, so I'm going to ask you to look into your soul and be sure that your question or statement is going to be really worth all of our time. That's just me being a bully, basically. Uh, so we're going to take a question there because you're waving your hand, so that's emphatic. Uh, the microphone's coming to you. Thank you very much. Um, I have a petition running around that will address one of the issues. So I'm coming back to waterways. Out in the west, we really love our waterways. We've been working on rehabilitation. We have a wonderful confluence area of Steel Creek and Maribyrnong River. I never hear anybody say they're going to look after Maribyrnong. We seem to think it's included in the Yarra. We don't, because the Yarra gets funding and we don't get funding. We've worked on Steel Creek for 20 years, and our water quality is poor and it's still getting worse. We, and I haven't heard anybody say they're going to look after Melbourne Water so that it can actually look after the waterways. All I know about the last government and this government is that you raid the coffers of Melbourne Water, you don't spend the levy property on waterways. Our poor water quality is going downhill because we don't have public transport and we're getting heavy metals and hydrocarbons washed into our creeks and killing them off. Will you please resurrect your belief in Melbourne Water, give it a decent budget so that it can help the community groups restore the health, and we can't have a healthy waterway unless we have clean air, get rid of this dependence on cars, and for the people in your lawn, for God's sake, get up and say you're going to give them clean air and cut coal. What I really like about that is it was a question by stealth with the words, will you please, in the middle. That's fantastic. The will you please, in on a technicality. Um, look, in terms of the water, look, to be honest, I mentioned the area because I'm involved in that. Um, the water is sits with the Minister for Water, so I, I'm not, I, it's very possible the Minister for Water has his head around the Maribyrnong issues, and I hopefully he does. I just, um, as I said, I, we're individually it, and we, we try and divide up our workload to be able to manage, and that's just real in the opposition. So, um, so I will pass that on to Martin and make it very clear around your concerns around the Maribyrnong, and, and I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, hopefully that he's across those issues. One last question, and I made a mistake of thinking emphatic meant short, but emphatic meant long and passionate, So, uh, which was wonderful. Let's get here in the aisle. Hey, uh, sorry, sir. Sorry, everyone else. No worries. Um, thank you, back from friends of the earth. Uh, Lily, you do have an open ear to good um, renewable energy policy. I'm just wondering what can people in this room do to help you get good policy passed? Um, and adopted by the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I think that there, there's a, I think maybe a presumption uh, that uh, somehow my colleagues have to be convinced, and, and, and I, I'm telling you they don't have to be convinced. I mean, we're all very strong and united and with one voice uh, on the need and the importance of renewable energy and growing that sector and doing it in a way that is robust with a clear vision and a plan of we want, how, how we want to get there, where we want to get there, uh, to and how we're going to get there. Okay, so but by all means, lobby will be like uh, and, uh, and, and write your letters if that's what you'd like to do, but certainly um, we're all very much committed to it. Just before we finish up, rather than asking each of you to make a, a general concluding statement, I might ask each of you not to make a commitment, but to, to give us an indication in the room of personally for each of you an area that you would passionately advocate for in the event that you're a minister as of the new year. It doesn't have to be a, it's not an election commitment, we're not pinning your party down to it, but to know about our potentially elected representatives, what, what's the thing that you're going to go into that for? New national parks. Yeah. <laughs> 
do you feel about the Central Highlands and the Leadbetter oh, Possum? I love it. I've yeah, been there. I love it. Good. All right. Um, oh, that, I take that as a commitment every <laughs> No, I just... I've been there. Daniel Landry's been there, and it's fantastic. I just tweeted well, it Well, sorry, there are beautiful bits. <laughs> there are beautiful bits, and there are some very terrible, awful bits, and we've got to make it all work. A lot of things are important, but uh, I want Victoria to get back on top uh, and ahead of the game uh, and leading the nation again on the new region. Uh, we started it uh, in terms of you know, a robust plan, and I want us to return to that. Thank you to both the Shadow Ministers for their contribution and to all of you that really terrific input and thoughts and questions. Uh, obviously tonight's possible, as mentioned at the top, thanks to RMIT giving us access to the space, but also Environment Victoria uh, worked on tonight with Get Up, with Friends of the Earth, with the Victorian National Parks Association and with the Wilderness Society. So just to say a couple of words to wrap us up for the evening, uh, please welcome Amelia Young from the Wilderness Society. much, Michael. I have no microphone, but you can all hear me, I hope. Um, I too would very much like to thank both of you, Lisa and Lily, for coming along this evening and sharing some of your views about what you would do if Labor is successful in gaining office in 67 days. Um, there's clearly some areas where Victorians are looking for clarity. Some of those might be in relation to targets and timelines around the VEAT scheme, some concern around building standards and what you might do in relation to that. We had a great question around plastic bags, which might be seen as perhaps a bit of an old, out-of-date issue, but hey, it's still very relevant when we look at the plight of marine life. And I've got to say, sir, I appreciated your suggestion around a tax on paper, because how ironic that Victorians might have to pay a tax on paper made from native forests when you're already subsidising the production of that paper. Uh, the East-West Link was a bit of a hot topic this evening as well, and while you both acknowledge that it's a public transport issue, as did some of the people who asked those questions, of course it is related to Victoria's environment and the overall well-being of the state that we live in here. A good suggestion from up the back in relation to the electric vehicle industry as well, I think the man who asked the question is gone. Your question was noted. <laughs> And I think it received uh, broad support from the room here this evening. So that might be something that we'll be looking to you for announcements in relation to moving forward. I think a very important issue relates to how the next state government will resource good policy and implementation of good policy when it comes to Victoria's environment. Will Victorian departments and authorities that manage the conservation and energy in this state be well funded into the future? And we're really looking to the next state government to invest back into Parks Victoria. We heard you mention Parks Victoria quite a number of times, but there are a number of other authorities and um, departments that need to be well funded moving forward. Will you step away from the bilaterals? Yes, a tricky question and a tricky area moving forward given the current federal government that we have, but this is certainly something that the national environment groups are watching as we move into a space where Victoria will be encouraged and invited by the government to sign a bilateral agreement. Not forgetting waterways either, some of the key platforms um, of the groups that have put on this evening's forum do relate to restoring the health of Victoria's waterways and also our coastal and marine environment. Some clear demands around clear air and cutting coal. And I was very heartened also to hear the closing remarks from you, Lisa, around declaring new national parks. It is um, a notable, if not reprehensible, record that the current government is the first in many, many years to not add to the conservation estate here in Victoria. And adding to the conservation estate does restore our very fragmented natural environment, but does also help to restore waterways, help maintain the values in our coastal and marine environment, and also protects land to withstand the effects of climate change as we move forward. So thank you both very much again. Thank you all for coming. And I'd also, on behalf of Get Up, Friends of the Earth, the Wilderness Society and the Victorian National Parks Association like to thank Mark Waken, the CEO of Environment Victoria, and his team, both staff and volunteers, for inviting the other Victorian groups to come and participate in this evening's forum as well. Thanks, Mark.
Thank you, Amelia. And finally, just a reminder that the second of these forums takes place next Tuesday night. Uh, we have Greg Barber from the Greens. I couldn't help but notice that both Lily and Lisa made a point of uh, underlining at the end of their comments uh, the idea that it would be either Labor or the Coalition that forms government. It suggests some internal polling that suggests that uh, being a bit combative with the Greens might be a good idea. Come along, ask some questions. We'd love to have you in the audience. Uh, but look forward to seeing some of you next week. Many thanks. <laughs>